What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Uh, this is going to be your Black Ink Crew Season 7, Episode 19 review. Only reason why I'm even still hanging in here with this shit is because I kind of want to see where this whole storyline going to go with Alex and and the back injury and all this shit. But anyway, <coughs> so it's going to be real down and dirty. Ain't a whole lot going down. Um, Bay's mom is leaving, so they had a going away party for her. Um, where they thought it was a good idea to invite strippers. For Bay Mama. I did see something on Instagram that I thought was really sweet. Bay put a really sweet message up on Instagram thanking the production, thanking VH1, and basically saying, you know, I want to, you know, I appreciate you guys inviting my mom um, into this. This was the first time that my mother had done so many things in her life. The first time she had her makeup professionally done. The first time she had a bubble bath. The first time that, you know, she got to cook for American people. You know, like it was so many things that Bay was able to do with her mom and for her mom that she was able to express through the show. And so I thought that was really heartfelt. Um, and then we saw a really touching scene when she took her mom to the airport. And, you know, her mother was saying how she just... Um, Babe was like, why don't you move here? I want you to move here. And she said, I don't want to be a burden to you. And she said, you know, every time you buy me something nice, it just reminds me of what I wasn't able to do for you growing up. You know, when you were young, you know, I wanted to buy you nice things. I wanted to do things for you, but I just couldn't. I didn't have the means. And we all know Babe's story of growing up in an abusive, um, with her dad being an abusive um, guy and her mom, them having to move around to try to hide from him. And they lived in some really bad places just to try to hide from her dad. So that was very touching to see. And that was very heartfelt. And it was it was good. Um, Crystal come to find out. Crystal done found out that she got a sister she ain't know nothing about. Daddy, Papa was a Rolling Stone. And she said, you know, I never really had a good relationship with my dad. So I'm not really shocked, shocked. But at the same time, I'm sort of shocked. You know, like, you got a whole... Another child that I didn't know anything about. And we see... Ugh, these, ugh I need some oil, y'all. I need some oil. I got the spray con, but the spray con don't get in there like that oil oil do. Let me tell you something. Let me go to the store tomorrow and get me some oil. I'm going to put a towel around my neck, and I'm just going to be... Because, see, that oil get up in there, honey. And, see, you know, it gets... Ugh. But right now, you know, that hair they use is dry. Why am I doing... It? I'm way left. Anyway, let me get back to this. But that's why I'm beating myself in the head. It itches. Y'all know what it is. Y'all know what it is. So, um... Alright, I'm done. I'm done. So, um... We see later on in the episode where she meets up with her sister. And they talk a little bit. And, you know, she was like, why do you think, you know, that we were never invited into each other's lives? And, you know, sister was like, eh, I ain't really too sure, you know. But they sort of compare notes on dad and, and, and how they grew up and stuff. And Crystal said, you know, regardless of my father and my relationship with my father, I'm going to always have a relationship with her. Like, this is my sister. This is my blood. And so that was great. That was good to see. Tati, you are a miserable bitch. She is being so disrespectful and so nasty and so rude to Crystal and to Toki. And here's the thing. You're making yourself look real pressed. Because every time you throw something out, either Ted or Crystal throw a jab right back at you and sucker punches your ass. And you are looking so petty. You keep making these comments about Crystal being a home wrecker and Teddy being this and Teddy. Like, if you had just... Now, don't get me wrong, Teddy. The way you handled it wasn't the most mature way, but, you know, that's who you are. However, Tati, you ain't a whole lot better. You know, and at the end of the day, we find out that Ted was talking to Crystal, you know, apologizing for your ass. Um, but anyway, but like I said, every time you, every time you kind of go at Crystal, you make yourself look so petty. And now, now you got a problem with Toki because Toki and Crystal are cool. Oh, Toki don't have a mind of her own. Every time uh, Crystal says something, she just laughs like it's the funniest thing she ever heard. I'm like, you are so simple looking, sounding. Donna and, um... Alex ended up moving in together because Alex can't afford his apartment anymore. And Donna's basically paying the bills. Hell, Donna is even paying his child support, it sounds like. And don't get me wrong, 
I don't never advocate taking care of a man who can't take care of himself, but this is a situation where he's injured. We hope it's temporary, but his only way of making money has been taken away from him. And, you know, I can I can respect that Donna is looking out for her man. Like, that's what you're supposed to do in, you know, sickness and in health now. I ain't talking about paying a man's bills who can work and chooses not to work or can do better and is choosing not to do better. But in this situation, it is definitely understood that Donna is stepping up and really looking out. She done went and found her a job and, you know, that kind of thing. So they're moving in together, and but Alex is really not happy about it. He's like, no. You know, yes, I wanted us, I, I, I always sort of saw us getting, you know, getting together and moving in together, but under different circumstances where we went and got a apartment together, not me having to move in with you because I don't have, I don't have a better option. So no, this was not something I wanted, you know, this, and it's definitely not the way I wanted it to happen. Later on in the episode, we see that Donna tried to take Alex out to, um, Expose him to something different. You know what I mean? You know, get out the house. Let us enjoy ourselves. Know you've been through a lot. You got a lot going on. And she took him to, like, one of those little pottery classes where you could paint the pottery and all that. Not really class, but, you know, like a sip and paint, but it's like with pottery. And, honey, Alex goes off because the chairs are too low for him. And he... He comes at Donna. And, again, you know where it's coming from. It's coming from frustration. It's coming from pent-up aggression and anger. And it's really coming from him not being able to really... Be mad at who he really is mad at. And he ends up blaming Donna for everything. If I had never come to Black Ink, this would have never happened. If I had never done this, never done that. Yeah, it's your fault. I didn't want to go to the wedding. You talked me into going. Does he mean it? There's a part of him that probably means it. But he knows at the end of the day, there's nobody to blame for this except for Caesar and Ted. Like, at the end of the day, that's it. But he's upset and he's frustrated and he's processing and he's dealing with all of this. So, you know, for right now... It's, Donna, you're going to have to understand that he's going to lash out. And unfortunately, when people lash out, they lash out at who's closest. And right now, that's you, boo. Um, but yeah, I... Of course, he's being ridiculous. It's not your fault. But that's what's sort of happening. So, Caesar, he, at the beginning of the episode, he ain't worried about it. He know Alex is lying. You know, he got a private investigator on the job, and it's going to prove that Alex is lying. Well, he gets the report back from his private investigator and finds out Alex is not lying. Everything Alex said is true. Alex can't tattoo. He hurt his back. It's legit. And now Caesar feel bad. Talking about, I never wanted this to happen. I really, you know, I really love that dude. I know he looked up to me. I really had love for him. You know, I really did not want this to happen. I feel really bad. So now you and your feelings, you fucked up and you feel bad. See... Again, if all of this is legit, then that's when you pick up the phone and you call him and say, look, I'm, I fucked up. What, what, what can I do? What do we need to do? What can I do? So, later on in the episode, Caesar is still feeling depressed and still feeling down. And, you know... Sky sort of, have, sort of has a good, a real conversation with him. And she said, you know, have you ever thought about the fact that you tend to push people away? That you tend to push people away that um, that you are the closest to. You know, look at, oh shit, look at Puma. Look, look at what he did to Sky last year when she wanted to open up her own shop and how he treated her. She said, you know, she was like, you don't ever miss Puma? And he was like, yeah, I do. I do. You know, and she was like, I think you need to really, you know, you need to really do some soul searching and really figure it all out because you need to make sure that why you do what you do. You know, why do you push people away? Why do you do what you do? Um, and he said, you know, you're right. So she invites him to come to L.A. with her. We'll come to find out everybody's going to go to L.A., but that's a whole other conversation. So... Sky is having a grand reopening. I mean, grand opening. The opening she had last year was her soft opening. She's gonna have a real grand opening, and but the only people she invited was um was Caesar and Ted. Talking about some, this is an A list event. I said, oh, that's some bullshit. So she didn't invite the whole shop. She only invited. I guess Big Fish was like, we only sending two people. We're not sending. We're not sending the whole cast to Miami and then turn around and send y'all to L A next week. We ain't doing that. 
But anyway, Sky has her grand opening and it goes really well. Charmaine from Black Ink Chicago shows up. I didn't even know they had beef. But seems like they've been going back and forth on Instagram and, and whatever. And Sky's like, you know, Charmaine just trying to be me. And I had to let her know that she can't be me. I'm the original and, you know, whatever, whatever. But they ended up hugging and seemed like they cool and they even did a little twerk and whatever. Okay, whatever. Alright, uh, what else went down in this episode? Oh, we had the team. Okay, so when they were getting ready to do the decoration for Bae's mama's party, Kit made a couple of comments about, you know, she gonna miss Mama Bay, but... You know, she glad to see her leave because now they can free up a little bit of money because they really couldn't afford to pay for two receptionists. And the only reason why they hired her was to do Bay a favor because Bay, um, because her mother ran up Bay's credit cards and this was a favor to Bay. But, you know, but she cool or whatever. Now, that's all they showed us that Kit said. And with that being said, I could see where she was coming from. I don't feel like she did anything really wrong. Eh. Did she need to necessarily say it? Maybe, maybe not. But I don't think she was really, like, trying to be catty about it. Like, everything she said was valid. They probably couldn't afford to hire two receptionists. Hell, they barely need one. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it was a favor to Bay. I mean, they showed it when Bay went to to um, Sky and said, Can you do me a favor? My mama done ran up my damn credit cards. So, um, but evil ass, petty ass, Miserable ass Tati gonna run back to Bay and not only tell Bay what was said, but based on what we saw, she didn't add shit to the sauce. She didn't made it seem like that Kit was talking about Bay parenting skills and that talking about um um and added more to what she said about her mom and stuff like that. So of course they end up going on this team building exercise that. Sky was supposed to put together, but Sky's still in Miami. She ain't got time to be dealing with no team building. She got she put Ted in charge. And so they go to the, um, they doing laser tag. So when they get to the laser tag, the instructions that Sky left were for them to tell somebody that they got a problem with and for the people who have problems to be on the same team so they have to work together. It's actually not a bad idea as a team builder if you're really trying to resolve some issues. But, of course, Sky wasn't really there to lead it, so it ain't really go the way it was supposed to go. But... The only person that really said anything was Tati. And Tati talked about how she think everybody fake and phony. And, of course, she said that she thought Crystal was fake and phony. Crystal was like, I don't really care about your opinion on me. She told Toki she was fake and phony. Toki was like, what? Just because your boyfriend dumped you and you miserable, that don't mean, like, the rest of us got to be miserable. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Then um, she got to Kit and was like, Kit, I think you fake and phony, too. Kit was like, what? How the fuck I get in this? She was like, I thought me and Tati were cool. So then Tati going to turn to Bay and say, Bay, what you got to say about it? Bay was like, well, you know, I really don't have a whole lot of beef with people. However, you know, I felt I heard that you said some things about me and some things about my mom and even talked about Nico. And Kim was like, well, what the fuck are you talking about? So, of course, they end up getting into this big argument. And, of course, they get to calling each other all kinds of bitches and hoes. They yelling at the top of their lungs. Can't nobody hear the other person. Tati, you done stirred up this whole fucking hornet's nest over some bullshit. Because, again, I know they at it. So, I ain't hear Kit say all the rest of that that you said that Kit said. But, of course, if I'm bae and I hear that somebody talking about my child. Oh, that's you talking about my mama and my child. Them fighting words. This, those are the two things if you talk about this, going to be a fight. So, of course, Bay, who really ain't really trying to start no smoke, but, you know, because Kit was like, before we start this damn laser tag, I need to know what the fuck is up with Bay, because me and Bay cool. I thought we were cool, so where's all of this coming from? So, they get to arguing, honey, and, of course, you know, the camera cut out just when it looked like Bay was about to just knock the shit out of somebody. And that's where it ended. So, we'll see where it pick up next week, y'all.